Are you getting ready to take the Praxis Mathematics exam? That's test code 5165, which measures knowledge for secondary school math teachers, including the subtopic of geometry, which we'll cover today. Hi, my name is Morgan, and I am a Praxis coach with Study.com, and I've also been teaching math for over eight years. Today, I'm here to help you out with some examples like you'll be seeing on the exam. Now, I want to mention that you'll have access to an on-screen graphing calculator, which I highly recommend that you use. Let's get you feeling confident for test day. Ready? All right, let's take a look at this question. Josh claims that these triangles are similar by SSS. Do you agree or disagree with Josh? So... This is asking for similar triangles. It's important to remember the difference between similar and congruent. So similar figures have the same shape, but could have different sizes so long as they're proportional. So in other words, there's a common scale factor that we're multiplying by for each of the sides, and then the angles are all congruent. For congruence, the size and the shape have to be the same. So all the size has to be the same. But this one's similar, so we're gonna be looking for a ratio between the sides that is equal. So it looks like for example, the corresponding sides here would be this 12 and 18, 5 and 10. I know it's 5 and 10 because of those are the smallest sides. And then we have 8 and 12 as corresponding sides. So I need to find the ratio between these sides. And since I'm just looking for similarity, like I'm noticing that the scale factor from HP to RE, 5 to 10, that is a times 2 scale factor. So that should be the same for all the sides. So for example, from 12 to 18, that should be a scale factor of 2, which 12 times 2 is 24. So this side should have a ratio of 24. It also doesn't work this way because 8 times 2 should be 16, not 12. So based off of this, the sides are not proportional. So let's see our answer choices and see if anything matches that. So first of all, agree, we, we disagree. These aren't similar, so we can eliminate both of those choices, which leaves these two. Disagree because all of the ratios for the corresponding sides are not equal. Yes, because we cannot determine similarity without knowing the angle measures. We can assume for triangles, if we have three sides that are proportional, that the angles are also gonna be proportional. Um, so we don't have to worry about that in this case, but for sure the proportions aren't even working for the sides that we have, so we disagree. Let's take a look at this problem. If L equals two, W equals 10, and H equals four, what can we say about V if V equals L, W, H? So this is V for volume, and volume equals length times width times height. So what we need to do is substitute each of these values into this equation and evaluate. So volume equals L, which length is two, times the width, which is 10, times the height, which is four. So we can just multiply all of those together. So two times 10 is 20, and then we still need to multiply by four and 20 times four is gonna be 80. So our volume should be 80, which we can see is this correct answer right here. All right, let's take a look at this question. If segment 80 has an equation of x plus y minus two equals zero, and BC is parallel to 80, what is the slope of BC? So let's take a look at AD. So here's AD and BC, they're parallel, which means they have the same slope. So there's two ways that we can approach this problem, especially because they give us the graph. I'm gonna show you another method that's more algebraic in case you encounter a problem that doesn't have a graph. So remember that slope is the change in Y or the change in X, also sometimes known as rise over run. So if we pick two points such as B and C on this uh, graph and we draw like a little right triangle between them, we can look at the rise and the run. So we're going from zero up to three. So that's three units for the rise. 
And then, and technically that's going to be negative three because we're going down three. We can also see that the slope is in a negative direction. And then for our change in X, we can see that that is also three units because it's going from three to six. So negative three over three is going to reduce down to a slope of negative one. So this is going to be our answer. But as I promised, I want to show you a second way that we can do this in case you aren't given a graph and can't count it. So we also are given this equation up here, which we could solve to find the slope. And what we want to do is we want to get it into slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, because m right here is going to be our slope. So let's go ahead and take our given equation, x plus y minus 2 equals 0. And essentially what we're going to want to do is we want to get the y by itself, and it's going to be in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to go ahead and start by adding the 2 to the other side of the equation. And then I need the x gone as well. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract the x from both sides of the equation. Now, we can't actually combine these because they're not like terms. So this is just going to be y equals negative x plus 2. So the slope that we're looking for is this m, which is going to be right in front of the x. And we might be slightly confused for a second because there's no number. But remember that there's always an invisible 1. So this would be like a negative 1x, which again reaffirms that our correct answer is negative 1. Let's take a look at this question. A cyclist traveled seven miles north, then the cyclist traveled east to a distance of 24 miles. How far is the cyclist from the starting point? So let's think about a map here. So if a cyclist starts here and travels seven miles north, and then travels east 24 miles, now, if you can't remember your directions, of course we have north and south. And then the way that I always remember this is west to east because it spells we, but I think there's also like a common saying like never eat soggy waffles that may or may not ring a bell as well. But anyway, we get a triangle essentially here and we know that these um, directions are perpendicular to each other. They're at 90 degrees. So this creates a triangle that we could use to find, because essentially the overall distance from the starting point would be this side right here. This is the distance. So we can go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem here, um, which only works on right triangles, which what this one is. So we can go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared in order to solve this problem. Now, it's important that the A and the B are the legs, while the C is going to be the hypotenuse, which is the longest side, and is also the side opposite of that right angle. So as I plug in these values, I can do 7 squared plus 24 squared equals that distance squared. And then I just need to evaluate and solve for D. So 7 squared is 49, and 24 squared is 576. Use that calculator. And that's going to equal d squared. Now I'm going to go ahead and add these two together. 49 plus 576 is 625. Again, use that calculator. No use getting it wrong because you added wrong. And then finally, our last step here, to get d by itself, we want to get rid of the squared. And the way that we do that is by square rooting both sides of the equation. And the square root of 625, when you put it in a calculator, is going to be 25. So d is equal to 25 miles, which is the correct answer right there. I hope this was helpful and you're feeling a little bit more confident for your test. If it was, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more helpful content. If you're looking for even more ways to study, head over to study.com. As a member, you'll get access to short targeted video lessons, extra study materials, and hundreds of practice questions like the ones we just went over.
We'd love to hear about your experience and what else we can do to help you get ready for your test. So leave a comment below with your questions, suggestions, or even come back and share with us how you did. Study well and good luck on your test.